show your support. Like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am that British guy and welcome to my Survivor Series predictions. Now before we start, obviously there have been quite a few changes to the card in the last couple of weeks and it is looking properly stacked. I don't think I've been this excited for a WWE show certainly all year and, and not for a very very long time. This is a WrestleMania worthy card to be honest. It's so strong all the way through and I just can't wait for the show. Slight little caveat though, obviously the show is this Sunday. However, if you are free at 8 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time, then you will be able to see on my channel the very first VBWF pay-per-view battering ram. It will be available to watch on my channel at 8pm. For those of you that haven't seen it yet, it's basically a weekly show. I have created my own roster and titles and storylines using the story editor in WWE 2K14. It started a few weeks ago and we are now at our very first pay-per-view event. And we will be doing one of those every month. So every sort of four or five weeks, depending on how the months fall, as well as the weekly shows that are at eight o'clock every Thursday. Anyway, cheap plug aside, let's get on to the predictions for Survivor Series. First up, we have the pre-show match. Kalisto taking on Enzo for the Cruiserweight title. I kind of feel like this is the end for this now. I, I think that WWE wanted Kalisto to make more of an impact than he did. Obviously they put the title on him and pretty much took it straight back off of him. I think that Enzo there is basically their new Neville. They need to keep the title on him as much as possible. He is the biggest thing in the Cruiserweight division at the moment. And it makes sense to just keep the title on him for as long as they can. Right, moving on to the main show, and firstly I'm going to cover all the title versus title matches, and then I will cover all of the other Raw versus Smackdown matches. So first up we have Intercontinental Champion The Miz taking on United States Champion Baron Corbin. Um, this is probably my least anticipated match on the card. The Baron Corbin Sin Cara stuff really hasn't done anything for me at all. Um, the Miz stuff's been quite nice with the bar, but there's been more focus on them and obviously all the shield bits and pieces, particularly Dean and Seth. So there's not really a lot to this. I feel like The Miz probably deserves this win more than Baron. I don't know if Baron is still in the doghouse at all, but uh, they certainly haven't been booking him particularly strongly. So I'm going to go for a win for The Miz here. Speaking of the bar, next up we have them taking on the SmackDown Tag Team Champions of The Usos. Now this one is very, very tough to call. Both teams have done excellent work over the summer and into autumn, really elevating the tag divisions on both shows. These two teams and The New Day and Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose of The Shield, so those four teams have really been the pinnacle of the tag team division on both shows. So very much looking forward to this match. I don't really think it matters who will win because I think they're going to put on an amazing show. But I feel like we are going to get a win for the Usos here. I'm not really sure why, I just feel like they had been booked as the stronger team in the run-up to Survivor Series, particularly their performance at Hell in a Cell. Next up, we have the women's match, Alexa Bliss taking on Charlotte. Now, obviously, this was originally scheduled to be Alexa versus Natalia, but she dropped the title to 
Charlotte this Tuesday, thus changing this match and the women's 5-on-5 five five match, which I will get to later. Now, I have a feeling that they will give Charlotte the win here. I believe that um, Alexa kind of ran into a bit of bother in the last week or so. Her and Nia Jax were arrested for possession of cannabis. And there was actually talk of taking the title off of her and putting it on Mickie James, kind of as a punishment. What I feel will happen is that she will lose this match to Charlotte. And then what we will see is a cash-in by Carmella, and she will actually cash in on Alexa Bliss, thus taking herself over to Raw and really severing the whole tie with everything that's been going on with her in the women's division now that James Ellsworth's gone it kind of allows Carmella to completely reset herself she can have a nice heel run over there and potentially drop the title to someone like Asuka in the new year and finally the last title versus title match Brock Lesnar versus AJ Styles this is going to be quite possibly one of the matches of the night because basically AJ Styles is in it. However, I do think they are going to give the victory to Brock Lesnar. I can't see him losing anything at all until he drops the title at WrestleMania, presumably to Roman Reigns if they're going to keep going with that plan. He will probably be on the ropes and come closest to losing that he will have done all year but I still think that Brock Lesnar is going to pick up the win here. Next up we have the six-man tag match between The Shield and The New Day. Now obviously The New Day cost Dean and Seth their tag titles so they were taken out of that match against The Usos and basically this is a grudge match. It is the first time on pay-per-view that The Shield have performed together for I think two and a half years something like that obviously they were meant to reunite at TLC and take the victory there so I think they will definitely pick up the win here obviously they're trying to push Roman Reigns as a babyface aligned with Dean and Seth so they need the win here and it won't really hurt the New Day because they're not really doing much over on Smackdown at the moment since their program with the Usos has finished they will be able to push the Shield to a very good match and eat a loss quite easily. Now we come to the two five on five matches. Firstly, we have the women's match and we have Team Raw, captained by Alicia Fox. And she is accompanied by Nia Jax, Asuka, Bailey, and Sasha Banks. And they are taking on the team from SmackDown Live, captained by Becky Lynch. And she will be joined by Tamina, Carmella, Naomi and a mystery partner. Now there have been a lot of rumours regarding Paige and she is supposedly going over to Smackdown Live. So I have a feeling she will be announced at the beginning of the pay-per-view that she is joining the Smackdown Live team and she will be the replacement for Charlotte now that she is facing Alexa Bliss. Now obviously earlier in my video I did mention that there would be a cash in from Carmella and I think because of that she will then not feature within this match because she would actually be the Raw Women's Champion which obviously gives us another gap on the Smackdown Live side of things and there have been more rumours floating about about the return of Nikki Bella and I think that it's going to be time for her to return as well into this match both Paige and Nikki Bella joining SmackDown Live for this match. Paige being announced at the beginning of the pay-per-view and Nikki Bella making a surprise entrance because of Carmella's absence. And purely because Asuka is on this team and she cannot lose, I have a feeling that the Raw women's team will take this match. We may see signs of dissension between Bailey and Sasha Banks. I'm not really sure where that storyline is going between the two of them. WWE seem to be stringing it along and then dropping it and then picking it back up again and dropping it. So 
I feel like they really need to kickstart something more with those two, possibly with the two of them arguing at some point during the match and sort of costing each other within the match. And it wouldn't shock me if Asuka is the sole survivor of this match, possibly even putting away two or three members of SmackDown Live at the end. And finally, we have the five-on-five -five men's match. We have Team Raw, captained by Kurt Angle, and he is joined by Samoa Joe, Finn Balor, Braun Strowman, and, of course, Triple H. And they are going up against SmackDown Live's team, captained by Shane McMahon, and he is joined by Randy Orton, Shinsuke Nakamura, Bobby Roode, and John Cena. Now, the SmackDown Live men's team actually won proceedings last year, so I have a feeling this year it will go towards the Raw team. This will obviously also mean that Kurt Angle, for the time being, manages to keep hold of his job, which could lead into something more happening between him and Jason Jordan. Maybe Jason sort of feeling like he could have been part of that winning team as well and Kurt feeling vindicated that he removed him from the team because he felt that having Jason in the team would have cost him the match and his job. Also with Raw winning that will allow for Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn to come in and cost a few members of the Smackdown Live team. Maybe getting rid of Shane McMahon right at the beginning so that the Smackdown Live team seems a bit directionless because they have lost their captain. Obviously this plays into the longer term storyline between Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon as well and kind of gives Smackdown Live more of an excuse to lose to the Raw team. So there we go, they are my predictions for Survivor Series. What do you make of them? Please let me know in the comments below if you agree with my choices or not. Also, please do check out the Very British Wrestling Federation episodes that I've already put up online. There are four of them at the moment. And don't forget that Battering Round pay-per-view will be on my channel at 8pm on Sunday, just before Survivor Series. I have been That British Guy, and I will see you very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>